Good evening, everyone. This is Kelton Ray Amba, and our group is assigned to discuss the Warehouse Receipts Act or the Act Number 2137 as amended. Uh, the act, this act applies to uh, all warehouse receipts which are issued by a warehouseman as defined under Section 58, Paragraph A of the Warehouse Receipts Act. And the civil code applies to the other cases where the receipts are not issued by a warehouseman as defined under the same section. So for the part of my discussion, we are going to answer these following common questions of the Warehouse Receipts Act. So number one, who may issue warehouse receipts? And then what is the required form of the receipts and its essential terms? And then what is the the effect of the omission of any essential terms of the warehouse receipt. And then this warehouse receipt a negotiable instrument. And what is the effect if the warehouse man fails to mark the receipt not negotiable or non-negotiable? And then what are the obligations of the warehouse man? So to give you a little idea of what is a warehouse receipt, uh, let us first watch this video. A warehouse receipt is a document that provides proof of ownership of commodities. For example, bars of copper that are stored in a warehouse, vault, or depository for safekeeping. Warehouse receipts may be negotiable or non-negotiable. Negotiable warehouse receipts allow transfer of ownership of that commodity without having to deliver the physical commodity. See Delivery Order most warehouse receipts are issued in negotiable form, making them eligible as collateral for loans. Non-negotiable receipts must be endorsed upon transfer. In the United States, warehouse receipts are generally regulated by Article 7 of the Uniform Commercial Code as adopted by the various jurisdictions. Warehouse receipts also guarantee existence and availability of a commodity of a particular quantity, type, and quality in a named storage facility. It may also show transfer of ownership for immediate delivery or for delivery at a future date. Rather than delivering the actual commodity, negotiable warehouse receipts are used to settle expiring futures contracts. Warehouse receipts may also indicate ownership of inventory goods and or unfinished goods stored in a warehouse by a manufacturer or distributor. That is what warehouse receipt, and I hope that the video gives you an idea of what is warehouse receipt. Is. And now let us first answer this first question: Who may issue warehouse receipt? So the person who may issue warehouse receipt is the warehouse man, and as defined, warehouse man is a person lawfully engaged in the business of storing goods for profit. And under Section One of the Warehouse Receipts Act. Uh, it is only the warehouse man may issue warehouse receipts. Hence, a receipt which is not issued by a warehouse man are not warehouse receipts, although they are in the form of a warehouse receipts. And then a duly authorized officer or agent of a warehouse man may also validly issue a warehouse receipt. And then what is the required or what are the required form of receipts and its essential terms? So under section two, warehouse receipts need not be in any particular form, but every such receipt must embody within its written or, in, or printed term. So first is the location of the warehouse where the goods are stored, and then the date of issue of the receipt, the third is the consecutive number of the receipt. And then the statement whether the goods received will be delivered to the bearer or to a specified person or to a specified person or his order. And then the rate of storage or charges, the description of the goods or of the packages containing them. 
And then the signature of the warehouse man, which may be made by his authorized agent. And then if the receipt is issued for goods of which the warehouse man is the owner, either solely or jointly or in common with others, such a fact of ownership must be stated therein. Uh, though in, generally in some jurisdiction, uh, a person engaged in the business of warehousing has no power to issue warehouse receipts on goods owned by himself. So, uh, however, under this act, a warehouse man may also validly issue receipts for his own property stored in his own warehouse. So, however, such a fact of ownership must be stated in the warehouse receipts. So to continue, a statement of the amount of advances made and of the liabilities incurred for which the warehouse man claims as yen. If the precise amount of such advances made or of such liabilities incurred is at the same time of the issue of the receipt unknown to the warehouse man or to his agent who issues it, a statement of the fact that advances have been made or liabilities incurred and the purpose thereof is sufficient. Now, what is the effect of omission of any of those mentioned essential terms? So first, the fact is that it will not affect the validity of the warehouse receipt. And then the warehouse man will be liable for damages. So it will only render the warehouse man liable for damages caused by the omission from a negotiable receipt of any of the terms which is uh, specified or required under Section 2 of the Warehouse Receipts Act. And then the third effect is that it will not affect the negotiability of the warehouse receipt. So neither is the negotiability of the warehouse receipt will be affected. Section 2 does not deal with the negotiability of the warehouse receipts. And note that the last paragraph of um, Section 2 uh, refers expressly to the omission from a negotiable receipt of any of the terms which are specified therein, and that not from a receipt which would otherwise be negotiable. And then the last effect is that the contract now will be converted to an ordinary deposit. So the issuance of a warehouse receipt in the form provided by the law is merely permissive and directory and not mandatory. So it is in the sense that if the requirements are not observed, then the goods delivered for storage become ordinary deposits. And now is warehouse receipt a negotiable instrument? So let's see. A warehouse receipt is in no sense a negotiable instrument because it does not comply with a Section 1, Paragraph B of Act Number 2031 or the Negotiable Instruments Law, which requires an unconditional promise or order to pay a sum certain in money. But a warehouse receipt could either be non-negotiable or negotiable. However, the word negotiable under this act is not used in the sense in which it is applied to bills of exchange or of promissory notes as the same like with the negotiable instrument law, but only as indicating that in the passage of the warehouse receipts through the channels of commerce, the law regards the property which they describe as following them and gives to their regular transfer by endorsement the effect of manual delivery of the things specified therein. Under Section 5 of the Warehouse Receipts Act, a negotiable receipt is defined, or a negotiable receipt is a receipt which is stated that the goods will be delivered to the bearer or to the order of any person named in the receipt. And then a receipt is non negotiable. It is also defined in Section 5 of the said act that it is a receipt which is stated that the goods will be delivered to the depositor or to any other person specified. So now what is the effect of failure to mark the, uh, to mark the warehouse receipt negotiable or to uh, failure to mark it non-negotiable? So 
the first effect is that the word if the word negotiable is uh, no the word negotiable is usually written or printed in the face of the negotiable warehouse receipt and its failure to mark it does not render the instrument or render the receipt non negotiable if it contains the words of negotiability and then in case of non negotiable receipt uh, this act imposes upon the warehouseman the duty to mark the receipts are non negotiable or not negotiable. Otherwise, uh, they shall be considered negotiable provided that under of such unmarked receipt purchase it for value, supposing it to be negotiable. Now, what are the obligations of the warehouse man? So the, there are two uh, principal obligations of the warehouseman. So a warehouseman is essentially a depository with respect to the goods which they received and stored by him in his warehouse. So the two principal obligation of the warehouseman is first to take good care of the goods entrusted to, his, to him for safekeeping and then second to deliver them to the holder of the receipt or to the depositor provided that the conditions under section eight of the warehouse receipts act are fulfilled. So what are these conditions as provided under section eight of the warehouse receipts act? So these are the conditions necessary before delivery. So section eight of the warehouse receipts act provides that a warehouseman in the absence of some lawful excuse provided by this act is bound to deliver the goods upon demand made either by the holder of a receipt for the goods or by the depositor if such demand is accompanied with the following. First, an offer to satisfy the warehouse man's again, and then an offer to surrender the receipt if negotiable with such endorsements as would be necessary for the negotiation of the receipt and a readiness and willingness to sign when the goods are delivered, an acknowledgement that they have been delivered if such a signature requested by the warehouse man. So why is it necessary that um, the receipt, why is it necessary that the receipt should be surrendered to the depositor? So the offer to surrender the negotiable receipt is required also to protect the warehouse man since the receipt represents the goods which they describe. So, and also the warehouse man will be criminally liable if he delivers the goods without obtaining possession of such negotiable receipts. And when is the time should the warehouse man deliver the goods which um, deposited to him? So the warehouse man must deliver the goods at the time specified in the contract or specified in the warehouse receipts. But when no particular time for the de delivery is specified in the warehouse receipt, the warehouse man must deliver the goods on a seasonable demand for the stored property. So that's all for my report or for the part of my report. And the other provisions of the Warehouse Receipts Act will be discussed by my groupmates. So thank you and good evening again.